Ich sitze hier mit Mark Barney Greenway von Napalm Death, die gleich hier die Headliner Show auf dem Noah ähm, rocken werden. Barney, how would you describe your music uh, to someone never listened to it? Absolute noise. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. Yeah, I mean it's it's just um, various aspects of um, very very hard music, and then extended beyond that to the nth degree of extremity, really. Sonically, that's what it's like. Lyrically, it's the exact opposite. It's actually very peaceful, humane lyrics, you know. So. You wrote uh, social critis criticism I mean, you, lyrics? Kind of loosely, but it's more humane observations, which arguably isn't always the same thing, you know, because it actually digs underneath the whole system, you know and uh, uh, try to address things that are unbalanced on the very basic level, not just the problems once they've happened, you know, so. Okay, but um, your lyrics are important, but if you sing it, um, first time I listen, I, I didn't understand a word. No, sure, but think about it, it encourages people to go and get the lyrics and read them. You know, um, and we put a lyric sheet with everything. You know, we everything's always got a lyric sheet because you you want people t to read it. You know, to absorb it. I mean, at their own leisure, really. You know, what, to whatever degree suits them. You know, is fine. You know, it's about it's about trying to spread ideas, not not necessarily hammer them into people's heads. You know, uh, you brought up a new album this year in uh, January. Yeah. And um, uh, will you play some songs yeah, from the new album? Six songs, yeah, from the new album tonight. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it hard to decide which uh, song you will play on a live show or on a? I mean, on a the, the main challenge really is to not not play the same songs all the time. You know, I, I everybody looks at it differently, but I look at it as I like to constantly change and evolve the set. Um, to also bring in really old songs that rarely ever get played. I think it's really important to do that. Because I think if you, for, for, for people that are fans of any music or any band, there are certain songs from certain bands that they might never get to hear. And I always think to myself, well, what, what is stopping that band from playing those songs, you know? So I think it's important to always, you know. But you have a few songs the audience want to hear it, so you will play yeah, there it. Is some, yeah, there is a few that, that, that yeah. Okay, uh, something else to say about festival shows and the difference between festival shows and um, yeah. headline I mean, tour our, shows? Probably our best environment is in a small club, nasty, horrible, sweaty, because we're that kind of band really, you know, it's, it's our environment, but we, you know, you've got to treat every gig as the best experience in the world. You have to, otherwise what's the point of being in a band? You know, you should play every gig like it's 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 the most important, yeah exactly, the most important thing you'll ever do, you know. And um, do you want to give a message to the audience during I mean, a live I mean, show? If there is an underlying, it's, the message is to, 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 to think for yourself, you know, to to don't take things on face value, always dig underneath the surface because there's generally always another story under there somewhere, you know. And as a as the hu human beings, we have the we have the right to know what is going on, you know, and to be able to affect that. But we've been so conditioned into just existing rather than living, you know. I think that's I think that there are therefore many things that we should know. It's our duty to ourselves to know about, you know. So that's what we try and do, spread that general curiosity, you know, of things. What's the main reason for you to wake up in the morning? To be alive, you know. I, well, no, I mean, you know, the, here's the thing, right? I always use this general analogy. If I can, when, when I die, if I have if I know that I'm dying, you know, if, if I don't just die suddenly, I would like to think that I can look back at my life and say that I lived it, that I enjoyed it, that I laughed, you know, that I, that I did many interesting and exciting things and I didn't waste my life, you know.
That's really important, I think, because you're only here for a finite amount of time, you know, on Earth. There's nothing else after, you know, so make the most of it, you know. Okay, something else you want to say to the audience about um for forthcoming tour in future? Oh, yeah. uh, right, you mean the, the Death Crusher thing? The carcass, napalm, obituary. Yeah, I mean, it's weird because we haven't really done a tour with that those ilk, those bands, for many, many, many years. You know, so, it, and it's, there seems to be a lot of interest in it, you know. So we'll, we'll deal with it in the same way we do any gig, as we were just talking about. We'll make sure every gig is, as far as we're concerned, top, top notch, you know. Of course, other people might think it's shit, you know, but there you go. That's the nature of uh, being an uh, appreciating music, you know. Okay. Thank you. No problem. You still nervous? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. It's it's uh, strange. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's really strange. <laughs> um, you're a vegetarian? Uh, vegan. Vegan. So, no animal products. At no, all. I don't wear leather. No animal. No, obviously no meat, no dairy, no nothing. Yeah, I'm quite strict. Yeah. You know? Will you judge people who? You know, here's the thing. I think as long as, as long as people know about animal welfare and what lies behind it, then they have to choose for themselves from there. You know what I mean? Into what they buy or eat or whatever. You know, but they should know about it. And you should. I think you should know where your food comes from. It goes back to that point about knowing what sits underneath everything. You know, people should really know. No, I don't judge people for it. But I do. I do say, well, look, this is what other sentient beings, i.e., animals, have to go through to get these products and stuff. Do, do you think that's right? I would just put that question to people. You know, and people from there have to judge, have to decide for themselves. You know. Um, I'm an environmental uh, engineer student, okay. and uh, I'm often confronted with uh, scenes about dying animals, mm. slaughtering animals, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, such stuff, and uh, also to the way um, you get milk from the animals or eggs. Because of course, uh, like production of that stuff is way way worse for the environment it's, uh, you know? yeah it's mm. it's um, the problem is if everyone only would uh, grow his own food and have his own pig who maybe he will slaughter it or or not yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or love it <laughs> give him a name no um, th the point is um, it's easier to get uh, ready food packed in plastic Always packed in plastic. Sure. <laughs> sure. And um, it's uh, it's uh, uh, harder. It would be harder for everyone if he have to do it by his own. Sure. So the people would switch thinking about food. Of course, but that's the human tendency. But of course, the actual the actual reality of it, if it were to happen, would be far more simple than what people think. I, I, I believe, you know. Do you grow your own food? I don't personally grow my own food, but I, I make sure to get my food from like organic sources. You know, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I mean that whole idea of buying the pre-packaged plastic wrap stuff to me is just. It's not food anymore to me. It's like some construct that yes. is the furthest thing from food. Yeah. You know. Uh, a grow. Um Agriculture, uh, yeah, yeah. Agriculture. it's industrial. That's like uh, industri industrialized agriculture. Industrialized. <laughs> oh, one English is bad. Sorry. No, no. Perfect. Well. So uh, the industrialization of uh, food. Yeah. And how to get it? Yeah. It's a mean point for. Um, yeah, why you can easily get cheap 
but see, but see, ready what, stuff. But see, one of the thi one of the big things is isn't actually people themselves. It's actually the agro business, the big agro business uh, multinationals. Business made by people. Who, yeah, but I'm talking about the really big agro business companies, the seed manufacturers for one yes. thing. You know, they they make they um, use their tools to make sure that people rely on massive agriculture you know like yeah. these mega dairies for one thing mega, mega dairies the big dairy manufacturers uh, um, mega big I know. mega yeah big dairies I milk milk yeah. big with hundreds of thousands of cows you know mega dairies yeah where there's cows being milked thousands of them in yeah. one place they to them it's business you know so they don't care they want to perpetuate that system do you think uh, animals have a soul i don't you see don't, you don't no 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 because i don't believe in souls yeah but it's sentient beings is another thing on this earth on this earth living right now it has nothing to do with the soul yeah it has to do with the experience while on earth so yeah, I don't believe that animals have souls. Humans don't have souls, so animals don't have souls either. Yeah, sentient, sentient yeah. beings, you know. Makes sense. <laughs> so you know, the point is, is that being sentient beings, then surely they deserve to live with dignity as much as anybody else does, you know. Because let's be honest, the cow itself has been bred to provide a food source. Technically, cow as an animal wouldn't there wouldn't be as many cows as what there is if that's true. If they weren't there wasn't the reliance on them as a food source. There wouldn't be, you know, there wouldn't be. So so um yeah, you know. It's interesting. It's nice nice to talk about such uh, existential hey, life things. Existential <laughs> but also you know regular stuff you know people don't people yeah but most people don't think about yeah their stuff uh, where they got their food from yeah and so they they became ill and don't know why yeah yeah I think people should know you know I mean make your own choices fair enough but you should really know what's involved with uh, especially with antibiotics going into food and, and different things you know used to make supermarket chickens water and growth hormones, you know. The antibiotics also yeah. goes into the water. And look at the problem we have now. People are, are resistant to antibiotics, yes. you know. And that's causing a problem in, 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 in treatment of disease and stuff. Because people, their whole bodies now are antibiotic resistant. So yeah. there's a real danger in 10, 20 years, people may become completely resistant to antibiotics, you know. Oh, you also have the, the genetic uh, uh, mutation of yeah. uh, uh, bacteria yeah. and, 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 that and viruses. That's and, what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, that's what makes the resistance to the yeah. antibiotics, you know. Yeah, so... Okay. Läuft das eigentlich noch? Alles, everything. Yeah, alles. <laughs> okay.